Sahana Vedatu Sahana Bhunaktu Sahavir Yung Karavalahai Tejas Vinavati Tamastu Mavid Vishavahai Aum Shanti 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 May he protect us both by revealing knowledge. May he protect us both by vouchsafing the results of knowledge. May we attain strength together. Let what we study be invigorating. May we not argue with each other. Aum. Peace. 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 Avatu. May he protect. Sahanao. Both of us together by revealing the real nature of knowledge. Who? That supreme Brahman who is revealed in the Upanishads. Besides, Bhunaktu, may he protect. Sahanao. Both of us together by revealing the result of that knowledge. Karavavahai. May we both accomplish. Saha. Together. Jointly indeed. Viryam, the power originating from knowledge. Moreover, let Aditam, the lesson, Ajas Vinau, of us two who are of sharp intellect, be benefiting for us. Let what has been studied by us be well learned. Let now Aditam, what has been studied by us two, be very tejas vi, potent, invigorating. Ma vit vishavahai. May we two not argue with each other. That is, may we not entertain that antagonism subsisting between a disciple and his teacher owing to defects in study and teaching that originate from unwitting lapses. Shanti, shanti, shanti hi. Peace, peace, peace. This thrice repetition is to avert all evils on the three planes. Adhyatmic, physical. Adibautic, natural. And adidaivic, supernatural. Aum. Throughout millennia of human history, there have been innumerable plans, projects, and programs to improve the quality of the human existential condition. All of these efforts, religious, philosophical, political, economic, scientific, etc., have failed. After thousands of years of so-called progress, there is still suffering, inequality, ignorance, poverty, crime, disease, war, and so on. In reality, all of these schemes and plans have only served to enrich the founders of these schemes and cement their power and domination over their followers. All these movements blame their failure on their perceived competitors, other schemes trying to do the same thing. In fact, they fail because of flawed structure. They uniformly try to exploit some network of cause and effect to gain some advantage. However, cause and effect as a phenomenon is only valid in Jagrat consciousness, superficial consciousness of the senses and the external world. The phenomenon of cause and effect is not valid in the other more powerful states of consciousness, thinking or dreaming, deep sleep or samadhi, creative trance, and turiya, self-realization. All limited schemes based on cause and effect are doomed because they are only partial solutions based on incomplete data. Mandukya Upanishad is based on Kevaladvaita, unmodified, unmixed, undiluted, unalloyed non-duality, 
as a complete solution to all problems of the human existential condition, based on complete understanding of all states of consciousness. It quickly delivers complete relief from suffering without relying on cause and effect, or any material action whatsoever. Students of Kevaladvaita do not consider other plans and programs for the mitigation or elimination of human suffering to be competitors. In fact, we welcome them and applaud the nobility of their intentions, if not always their methods, to attain this goal. Now let's examine the structure of Mandukyopanishad, which is based on the structure of consciousness. The Sanskrit root mand can mean adorning, decorating, praising, rejoicing, glad, or beautiful. Manduka is the name of a Vedic school, also the name of a Sanskrit poetic meter. Mandukya is the possessive form. This text is actually three works. The original Mandukya Upanishad, 12 shlokas, Gaudapada's Agamakarika Commentary, 215 shlokas, and Shankaracharya's Agama Shastra Vivarana Commentary on all 227 shlokas plus the invocation and introduction. Namaste. So you see why I wanted to explain the structure before we dig down into the individual verses, because it's really complicated. And I want to give an overview, like a map, so we know where we are at every stage of the process. Now, the name Mandukya, huh? the Mandu meter is very slow. Manda in Bengali means a slow person, a, a dull-witted person. <laughs> but in Sanskrit, it means slow in the sense of a slow tempo. So all the meters of Manda chandas are slow. On the other hand, it also means joyful and elevating and cheerful huh? because by understanding and following this philosophy of non-duality, all the troubles, all the worries, all the suffering simply evaporates. I mean, you have to experience it for yourself to really understand. I mean, I'm 76 years old and I feel like a kid. I feel so optimistic, like life has only begun, huh? and it will never end. I know that for a fact. So opening up the deeper states of consciousness is the clue. It is the key to the complete eradication of suffering. See, the problem is we're totally identified with this surface consciousness, jagrat, sensory consciousness of the phenomenal world. And of course, it's filled with all kinds of changes and nasty qualities that we don't like and so on and so forth. So we remove our identification with this surface consciousness and plunge deep into the more powerful states of consciousness. Then you'll see for yourself, all this suffering simply goes away. Anyway, this structure of Mandukopanishad is wonderful because there are four chapters, and each one explains one of the levels of consciousness. And so the structure of consciousness and the structure of the Upanishad are basically the same. And this gives the Upanishad great clarity and power. Although you'll see, the topics raised are extremely subtle, and the reasoning is often convoluted and difficult to follow. So we'll do our best in this series to clear up all of the esoteric terminology and give you the digest of the meaning of Shankaracharya's commentary.
Now, the reason why we didn't go deep into every text before was that we were working off Swami Nikhilananda's uh, edition, and they did not give the complete commentary of Shankaracharya. What to speak of the glossary of Ananda Danya, who is another commenter on the same scripture. So there were a lot of points that were confusing because they were incomplete. But now we're working from the edition by Swami Gambhir Ananda, which is complete. And it also includes, we also have an online edition, which includes the glossary. So we'll be able to resolve any problems or any difficulties of logic or terminology in this series. And finally, I just want to remind you that this is not theoretical. This is not merely philosophy. This is meant to be applied and the result to be enjoyed as enlightenment, illumination, and liberation. Liberation from what? <laughs> the suffering endemic to conditioned consciousness and material existence. So let's go back into these chapters and look at how their organization brings out the points embedded in this analysis of four states or four levels of consciousness in the Vedas. Chapter 1 of Mandukya Upanishad is titled Agama Prakarana, and the subtitle is On the Vedic Text. Its purpose is determine the meaning of Aum based on the Vedic scriptures. Chapter 2 is called the Vaitatya Prakarana, on unreality and it rationally proves the unreality of the phenomenal world of duality. Chapter 3 is called the Advaita Prakarana, on non-duality, and it rationally establishes the truth of non-duality. Chapter 4 is called the Aladashanti Prakarana, on quenching the firebrand, it rationally establishes the Ajatavada, the view that the world is unborn. The structure of Chapter 1 is a bit complex. After the invocation and introduction of Shankaracharya, there are the first six verses of the Upanishad, then the first nine verses of the Karika, then the seventh verse of the Upanishad, followed by verses 10 to 18 of the Karika. Then the Upanishad verses 8 through 11, the Karika verses 19 through 23, and finally the Upanishad verse 12 and the Karika 24 through 29. And that concludes all the original verses of the Upanishad. Chapter 2 contains the Karika verses 1 to 38, Chapter 3, Karika verses 1 to 48, and Chapter 4, Karika verses 1 through 100. Now again, the purposes of these four chapters. Chapter 1's purpose is to demonstrate that Aum is all. Chapter 2's purpose is to rationally prove the unreality of the phenomenal world. Chapter 3's purpose is to rationally establish the truth of non-duality. And Chapter 4 is to refute all non-Vedic dualistic views. So how do these correlate with the states of consciousness and the views? Chapter 1 is based on Dvaitavada. Dvaitavada is the view that the world is real. And of course, it is the view of Jagrat consciousness. Chapter 2 is based on the Vishishta Dvaitavada. And its view is that Brahman transforms into the world. In Chapter 3, 
This is transcended. And the Vivartavada is used to prove that the world is Maya and Brahman is never transformed. Chapter 4, its view is to establish Ajatavada. And Ajatavada is the world is unborn. And the reasoning in this chapter is extremely high and sophisticated. So we're still not done with the introductory material. There's going to be another episode, Introduction Part 2, in which we'll go into Shankaracharya's invocation and his own introduction to his commentary, which is extremely revealing and brings up all the important issues in this translation. So please stay with us, and I hope you understand and enjoy the benefits of Mandukya Upanishad. If you have any questions, please, please post a comment. If you have a doubt, it probably means a lot of other people have the same doubt, and they will all benefit from the answers. Aung Tatsa, Aung Shakti Aung, Aung Namah Shivaya.